Hi friends, welcome back. So today you can see that I've got a bunch of stuff sitting out here on my counter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put together some really quick freezer crock pot meals. This will allow us to just be able to pull them out of the freezer. You can set them out on the counter either in the morning or at night. And they're ready to pop in the crock pot as soon as they're thawed enough to be able to broken apart and put into the crock pot. So this will make it super easy. It's kind of like a dump and go type thing or sheet pan meals, only you're literally just putting it into the crock pot and you can walk away, set it and forget it. And the only thing that most of these meals will need to be made, which you can make a large batch of it at like the beginning of the week, if you know that you're gonna have several meals that require it, is rice. Now we do, I do use either jasmine or basmati, depending on which one is more available. Usually it's going to be the jasmine, but on occasion I do have, I do buy basmati rice. And that just makes it really easy. Rice will keep in your refrigerator for, you know, a week or two sometimes, usually about a week. I wouldn't recommend two weeks, but a week. You can make it ahead of time and put it in the freezer until you're ready for it. But these are just super easy, especially if you're working. Um, you're not available to cook if you have other things like gardening season when you're going to be out in the garden a lot. This just makes it super easy and uh, very healthy and wholesome and you can't go wrong. So first we're going to get started with is taco soup. I'm going to actually make two batches of this one. Um, and watch out Mimi. They're super easy. You can, if you have the stands, that is great. I don't. I am gonna put this into a bag here and let me grab some seasonings here. Ooh, almost had a cumin. Uh, garlic, onion. Yep, that's good. All right, so we've got some ground hamburger meat here, right here. Uh, it's cooked, but cool to room temperature. So we're gonna toss this in here about two to three cups. Yeah, three cups, that's gonna be about half of this mixture here, which is good. Uh, to this, I'm gonna add a can of black beans. And then we're gonna got, we have a can of just, this is just the diced tomatoes and juice. And then a can of green chilies here. You can, instead of using just the diced tomatoes and green chilies, you can use Rotel. I don't have any Rotel on hand. This is just gonna make it super easy for me. Plus it actually gives us more green chilies and more of the green chili flavor this way. Okay. To this, I'm going to add garlic powder. And I'm just going to eyeball it here, probably about um, a tablespoon and a half. I am not a precision cook. I do follow recipes the first couple of times I try them, but I'm definitely one that, that likes to experiment and make things to my flavor. All right, so that was again about a tablespoon and a half of onion powder that go around. This is cumin. Cumin is what kind of gives it that smoky flavor. So we're gonna add to this probably about a half of a teaspoon. You can add more if you like it. And then this last one, I don't like chili powder so what I get is the Chipotle chili pepper powder. It has a slightly different flavor and isn't as strong as that chili powder flavor. So we're gonna add probably about one teaspoon of this. And I'm gonna add some smoked paprika too. I want this to have more of like that smoky flavor. About one teaspoon of that. All right, friends, so that's all that goes into that. When you take this one out of the freezer, uh, you will add 32 ounces of beef broth to this and a block of cream cheese. But that is all that goes into that. Massage this around and get it mixed together. 
I'm going to lay it out on my cookie sheet here. So I have a cookie sheet laying out here to lay my stuff flat on so that it'll stack and then I can go and put it into the freezer and it'll freeze flat and save some room. So we're going to do the same on this one. Like I said, I'm making two of the taco soup recipes. So I'm just going to go ahead and add all this meat here. Black beans. Tomatoes. Our seasonings. And just the rest of that bottle. All right. The only thing I haven't added here is salt and pepper. I will wait to add that until after I've added the uh, broth. Um, that way I can adjust the salt as I need to. There we go. Now you don't have to necessarily add the broth to that. Uh, you can just leave it as it is. I need to leave these out because next we're going to make chicken fajitas. Uh, so next we're going to do the chicken fajitas. You don't necessarily have to add the broth to that. You can leave the broth out and just pick it up in a skillet and instead eat it with like chips like nachos as far as that taco soup mix. So it's very versatile when it comes to what can go into that. All right, next we're going to do our chicken fajitas. And I am just going to grab this. This is just the frozen peppers and onion blend that you can get in the grocery store. And I'm just going to dump that in. Let me grab. I have some chicken breasts I have bought out here. And, oh, these are chicken tenders. <laughs> I was wondering. I'm just gonna keep these because these are actually gonna go in the other one. But I've already pulled these out, so. So the next two recipes is going to be chicken fajitas, which you can cook in the crock pot too, and then just add to um, add to the crock pot, or you can pour them out onto a cookie sheet and bake them that way, or you can just put them into a skillet. Either way, it's not that big of a deal. So these chicken tenders, since I didn't realize these were chicken tenders when I took them out, I'm just gonna cube up. And these are gonna be for our uh, chicken enchilada. Uh, sweet potato, it's gonna have sweet potatoes, black beans, and enchiladas, or chicken enchiladas in it. So let me go ahead and get this chicken cube since I already pulled it out. These are all chicken breasts. So I'm going to use probably six, and this one's kind of got a little bit of freezer burn in it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in here like this, and it'll get used properly or get it used really quick. These will probably get eaten up in the next couple of weeks. Right. 
So for the fajitas, I am cutting these in little strips. chicken in the freezer I really need to get used up so I'm gonna go ahead and take it and go ahead and make meals with it so that they're easily available because you can see that some of these are getting a little freezer burn okay so far that's four chicken breasts in this chicken fajita and I'm probably gonna add two more We tend to eat more beef for the most part, so the chicken tends to get pushed to the bottom of the freezer and I miss it sometimes. So it'll be good to get this used up here. that one could have probably been made to two meals but the way I cook them is that they're for our lunch our dinner and then lunch the next day or for a couple days so I tend to make bigger batches of stuff And since I've already got the cutting board and the knife out and it's being used, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop this chicken for the enchilada bake. These are thighs here. Like I said, I'm just trying to use up this chicken that's in my freezer. And I'm just gonna cube these. all about the same size so that they'll cook evenly. I got the dogs in the kitchen with me today and they are waiting for any little strips of anything I drop. Aren't you girls? guys are let's tell me down in the comments what are some of your favorite crock pot go-to fast dinner meals that your family really likes and enjoys I'm always looking for new recipes to try out my husband is a little bit picky when it comes to his meal with his uh, food he really loves he really loves Mexican food 
And then our other meals that we really like are Asian. So usually anything with those flavors is good. Sometimes we do Italian, but we don't eat a lot of pasta and stuff. So Asian and Mexican usually is really easy to do because then we can just use rice if we want to add something like that to it. See, because I can, I generally eat very low carb, so not a lot of breads or pastas and stuff like that. And, but he likes to have some rice or something to go with his stuff. So if I make Asian and Mexican food flavored stuff, then he can have rice with it. All right, we got our hands clean from that. Ouch. All right, so back to our chicken fajitas here. Um, we're not gonna do a lot of anything special. We're gonna add some garlic powder in here, some onion powder. I would add some more cumin, but I don't have any, so I'm gonna go with some chipotle, a little bit more than I usually do, some paprika, I'm going to add some avocado oil in this, probably about a quarter to a third of a cup. To help with that smoky flavor the cumin gives, I'm going to add some of this, it's called umami seasoning. Uh, you can get it at Walmart. I like to put it on my burgers, but I'm going to add toss a little bit of that in here. And then that's all. That's all you need for that recipe. That is just, again, super easy uh, to make. Toss it all together. all the air out of that. We really like fajitas, so I usually just get like tortillas to go with it for my husband. Okay. There we go, there's our fajita mix. I'm gonna throw that on there. All right, now for this one, we're gonna add some sweet potatoes in here. I've got some that's just from the freezer. And then I have some black beans that I'm going to go ahead and strain. And rinse a little bit. So that that color doesn't bleed too much. And then what I have here is some homemade enchilada sauce. That's what's making this super, super easy. If you make and can your own enchilada sauce, you can. I was trying out a recipe, so I made a small, like a half batch of it to try it out. And I just put it in the freezer instead of canning it since there wasn't a whole lot to can. And I'm just gonna pour that in here. It already has like all the seasonings and like the chipotle seasonings and stuff in it. So add salt and pepper to this stuff to start off with because I will add that to it when it's cooking so that I don't over season it with salt or pepper right. and just like that that's four meals down all right so here's some more of my Ziploc bags here I've got two, four, five more recipes here. 
The next one we're going to do is going to be our roast slash brisket. Brisket is very expensive to buy in the store. So I generally, and I, it's just me and my husband that eat. So a brisket is a little too much for us to eat at one time. So, and I don't necessarily have the space to cook a full brisket. So I usually just buy a cheap roast, like I got here. And we're gonna add that with the brisket marinade. I do not make my own. Our favorite brisket marinade is this Claude's brisket marinade. It's what I grew up on. It's got an amazing flavor to it. And I just eat, I, we just really like it. Uh, my mom will also make homemade barbecue sauce with it after like the brisket or roast is done cooking. So we're just gonna take this. Again, we don't have to do anything to this. We're gonna pop it in here. I'm gonna wash my hand right quick. Rinse it off at least. Now I'm using the same cup towel for all of this and I'm not gonna worry about cross contamination or anything because this cup towel is gonna go in the wash. I've got a load started out there that's soaking. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna do anything else with that cup towel once we're done with this. And then I'm just gonna pour the rest of this in here. And there is our brisket. And guys, I wish y'all could smell this brisket marinade. It is amazing. The smell of it is just fabulous. I want to try at some point to make it myself from scratch. But, so there's our brisket. I'm not gonna put that on the kitchen. I'm gonna put that there. Okay. So that leaves four. We've got two more Asian and, well, we got four more Asian. So two beef and two more chicken recipes to go here. Um, let me grab my recipes out there right here. My printer is out of ink, so I had to write down the ingredients and quantities on here. And I think because I'm doubling the beef recipe here, I'm not gonna have enough soy sauce, or in this case, coconut aminos, um, to, to put in these. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to write on the, the, the freezer bag that how much soy sauce is gonna to need to be added during the cooking process. So let me go ahead and get that done right quick. So for both of these, So that I don't forget. All right, we got that. So let's go ahead and do the beef one. Like I said, I'm doubling this recipe. So this recipe calls for one pound of beef cubed. Both of these do, but I'm gonna double it. So I'm gonna have about two pounds of ground, or cubed beef in each one of these bags. So I'm gonna open both of these up and then so that I can divide this meat up into it. I'm just eyeballing this. This is a big like family pack of stew meat that I'm using here. And I'm just kind of eyeballing like the half mark here. Not being super like good on measurements. So I've got a sweet and sour beef and a beef and broccoli that we're gonna be doing here. Okay. 
Okie dokie. So let's see. On this sweet and sour beef, I am going to add some bell peppers that I also have in the freezer because I want to add some vegetables to this. So there's that. And then on this beef and broccoli, I've got some broccoli for us here. Beef and broccoli, other than of course the soy sauce, we've got sesame oil, which is going to call for a tablespoon. I don't know where my tablespoon one is, so I've got a half of a tablespoon here. So we're going to add four of these because I'm doubling the recipe. I usually get most of my recipes off of Pinterest, and you just need to go through and find one that works for you. adds a nice like um, toasted flavor to Asian dishes. All right, then we've got garlic, three cloves. I just bought this uh, minced garlic from the store because I don't grow my own and I want fresh, but I don't always, I'm not always able to use it. So I'm just going to give three four, five, so I've got to use this for other recipes too. I probably should have got the big one. And then of course the soy sauce and a beef broth. I don't have, I don't want to open a thing of beef broth. So what I'm going to do is use this better than bouillon, uh, beef bouillon here. And it calls for a cup. So what I'm going to do I am just going to make my own right quick so I don't have to open a container of it. If you've never used this stuff, it is really, really good. Mm. It's like a beef concentrate, but it's not a powder form. This is just lukewarm water here to help dissolve it a little bit. actually into this I'm going to add some cornstarch Requesting two tablespoons. This is going to make a sauce. A slurry. So that cornstarch is a thickening agent. You can change it for flour or you can use something like xanthan gum if you want to do something that's more gluten free. Now, in my experience though, with xanthan gum, it tends to give it kind of a waxy feel if that makes sense I'm not going to be worried if this is like super mixed up or not just a little bit is good and we're going to pour that in so we've got our beef this is our broth we don't have the soy sauce sesame oil garlic and cornstarch in this one And I may end up adding, after we cook it, another thing of broccoli, um, just to make it have a bit more broccoli in it. Try and get as much of that air out as possible. So there's our beef and broccoli. All right, for our sweet and sour beef, Pull this one aside. Sweet and sour beef, we've got three cups of cold water, 
three fourths cup vinegar. I'm honestly, I think this is gonna be too much sauce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use the regular amount here. I'm not gonna put the cold water in it. So three fourths, that's one and a half cups of vinegar. This is what's gonna give it that sour flavor. I am gonna use apple cider vinegar to give it a little bit more rounded feel. So there's that. Then we have soy sauce, but we're not gonna add the soy sauce. Brown sugar. We got out my brown sugar. This is gonna give it that sugar flavor, that sweetness. tablespoons is an eighth of a cup and I've got okay. this is calling for nine tablespoons of brown sugar now two tablespoons is equal to eighth of a cup so I've got nine so I'm gonna say this is gonna require about a cup and a half of brown sugar but I don't want mine as sweet so what we're gonna do I have no idea what to learn oh yeah I remember it's all this. I'm gonna go ahead and wash this. And I'm just gonna put a cup in there and then after it's done cooking, if I feel like it needs a little bit more, I can always add a little bit more. definitely wish I had more measuring cups and I think that's something I will be investing in especially when I do like these large batch cooking days it's not something you generally need but when you do all these batch cooking days and have to um, constantly wash stuff it definitely makes it hard so I am going to go ahead and pack this brown sugar in here to make sure I get a solid All that good. All right, and then it is also calling for cornstarch, five tablespoons. I feel like that's gonna be good since I'm not really doubling the sauce, I just doubled, doubled the cups of cold water. Uh, I'm going to add two and then if I need to add more I can add it later. Okay. All right. There we go. That's our sweet and sour beef recipe. Again, we're not adding the soy sauce to these. We'll add it to it when we pull it out of the freezer because I'm not going to have enough today. I should have grabbed a couple more when I was at the store the other day. We're just going to mix this all around. There is our sweet and sour beef. All right, we're on to our last two recipes here. We've got two more chicken recipes. These are going to be with chicken legs. You can sub chicken thighs for it, or you can do breast or cubed chicken if you would like. It's just up to you. We like the darker meat, so I am going to go ahead and use chicken legs. My husband absolutely loves chicken legs. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use that and these sound really, really good. So it's the honey garlic chicken. That's pretty popular with a lot of people. And then the Asian chicken, which is kind of similar to the honey garlic chicken, but not quite the same. Um, so I'm interested to see how this one, this one's got red pepper flakes in it. And this one's definitely going to have a sweeter flavor. And this one's going to have a little bit like sweet and spicy flavor. So let's get to it. These call for about two and a half to three pounds of chicken legs or thighs. My package here is a little over four pounds. So splitting this in half will be perfect for this recipe. 
So before I actually put the legs in, I'm going to go ahead and mix the sauces in this because then I can lay it down with the chicken legs. And the great thing about this is this is going to marinate these chicken legs when they come uh, when you're defrosting them. So they're really going to have that good and rich flavor to them. All right, so let's start with the Asian chicken. So it calls for three cloves of garlic. Okay, and then we've got one and a half teaspoons of ginger grated. So I don't have fresh ginger, but I did pick up some of this at the store. This is the uh, finely chopped ginger, grated ginger that's already in the tube. Since we don't eat, we usually just use ginger powder. I'm gonna use this this time because I feel like it's gonna have a better flavor, kind of like minced garlic versus powdered garlic. So I'm just gonna give that a good squeeze in there. This also calls for tomato paste. I don't wanna to have to open a can of tomato paste, but I do like to keep this in for these kind of recipes. This is just the tube tomato paste. It is super good and super convenient. This is a brand new one. So again, I can just squeeze in some tomato paste. I'm eyeballing this recipe. I'm treating this more like a marinade instead of, of something as instead of like an actual like full recipe. So it's called for a half a cup of soy sauce. Here's my half a cup of soy. Like I said, I don't use soy sauce, I use coconut aminos. Red pepper flakes, a fourth of a teaspoon. So obviously, they're not using this as a very hot recipe, so I'm gonna actually probably double that. I'm gonna do a half of a teaspoon, and I'm just gonna use the lid here. So for this recipe, this is I'm just adding like a half a teaspoon. Okay. Um, salt and pepper. I'm going to wait on the salt and the pepper again. I'll wait till it's almost finished cooking to season that because coconut and coconut aminos and soy sauce is salty. So we're just going to hold off on that. And then rice wine vinegar. This is calling for two tablespoons. So I don't have a lot left in here. So I'm just going to probably add about half of what's left in here. You could probably substitute uh, apple cider vinegar if you wanted to. And then the last thing we have on here is sugar. So I need a half a cup of sugar for this recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that around a little bit, get that sugar all dissolved up in that vinegar. This actually smells really good. It's not like overly sweet, but it doesn't smell like overly tart either. I think this is really, really going to be good. I am, however, even though there's red pepper flakes in that, I have some of this garlic chili sauce in my refrigerator that we like to add to stuff when we eat Asian food. And I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of this in there too. Cause like I said, when it comes to this, we like to eat it a little bit more on the spicy side. So we're gonna definitely, my husband definitely likes it spicier than I do, but okay. And that should add, give it really good flavor. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken legs to this. What do we got? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So we're going to add about six. So one of these is going to have five, one of these is going to have six. Right, guys there's our Asian chicken that looks really good I'm excited for that 
And <laughs> our last but not least here, we've got our honey garlic chicken. So this one, onions minced. I don't have onions minced, so we are just gonna use onion powder. I'm gonna dump the rest of that in there because it calls for two tablespoons, so we're just gonna go with the garlic powder. Grated ginger again. Cornstarch, two tablespoons. A fourth of a cup of water. A third of a cup of soy sauce. Again, I'm not adding salt or pepper to this, even though it calls for it. And then last thing we last but not least we need honey. So it says I need a half of a cup of honey. So I'm going to grab my half cup measuring cup here and I'm going to spray it with some olive oil so that it makes it really easy to come out. Because honey gets very sticky. I do use the raw honey. that's not been pasteurized. I feel like it's got a better flavor and it will definitely last longer. All right, that is coming out beautifully. Honestly, I was gonna use, I'm gonna use just a little bit of here to finish scraping this out. But you can guys can see that that is so clean. All right. All right, that is the base for this one. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up right quick because you did, yeah, we did add, add cornstarch to this. So I wanna make sure that cornstarch gets dissolved and not in clumps. Get that honey and everything mixed around together. It smells like honey, but it smells so good. And then we're just gonna add our chicken legs. Oh, there was a hidden one back there. Now yeah, it's this one. So let's just double check two, four. Yeah, there's already six in that. with all that so what we're going to do now is we're just going to do a quick cleanup and then we'll get an overview all right so friends in just a little over an hour we have two taco soups we have a fajita chicken we have honey garlic chicken we have a brisket slash roast a asian chicken black bean and sweet potato chicken enchilada bake beef and broccoli sweet and sour beef so that is two 
four, six, eight, nine. That is 10 meals in about an hour that are pretty much ready to be cooked whenever you pull them out. So that is a huge success. I'm super excited for that. It'll make my life a little bit easier and it will make it easier if my husband wants to cook something when I'm not home, then he all he has to do is just throw most of these in the crock pot, which will definitely save us both a little bit of work in the long run. All right, friends, so that's gonna be it for today. If you liked what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you found these inspirational or motivating, please leave a comment down in the below to let me know uh, if you have any suggestions or let me know what your favorite crock pot meals are so I can maybe try them out the next go round. All right, well, that is it for today and we will see you next time.